What's up, everybody? We are back. John Della Rose here, the leading Hispanic voice in science fiction, coming at you with another epic collection review. I'm finally on top of one of the new ones that just came out. This is Maximum Carnage, uh, The Amazing Spider-Man, obviously, and it covers the Maximum Carnage storyline. I didn't expect to get this volume 25 from 1993, as uh, they've been running volume 15 through 23 pretty regularly and we needed a volume 16 to complete that entire run and go through and we did not get that and it's not been announced for this year much to my chagrin so we've got volume 16 we've got a skip of 16 volume 15 got a skip of 16 and then all the way up through 23 and now this 25 now maximum carnage has been collected multiple times before i've already had the trade paper back it really annoyed me to have to buy this uh, to get my matching epic collection spine but unfortunately i'm a chump and i do that and it also contains something i don't have that's not in the other volumes which is spider-man punisher Sabretooth designer jeans which is a spider-man graphic novel featuring these other two characters obviously uh which uh has nothing to do with the carnage storyline it's a completely separate story just kind of tacked on the end to make it epic collection sized because it would have been a very short book otherwise it's actually still pretty short for epic collections coming in at 432 pages most epic collections get a little closer to 500. Covers Amazing Spider-Man 37, 37, 378 through 380, Web of Spider-Man 101 through 103, um, Spider-Man 201 through 203, and Spider-Man Unlimited 1 and 2. Now, uh, 378 through 380 is right after um, the famous 375 issue, which was gold. Uh, with you know the foil cover and all that and venom declared that he's never going to fight spider-man again he's going to leave and go live somewhere else well obviously he comes back real quick i'll get into that web of spider-man had this whole issue with a spider mobile in issue number 100 also a foil cover and spectacular spider-man had one of the best issues uh, of this era in issue 200 where harry osborne spoiler the green goblin uh dies and so we get the funeral going on there. Uh, we get a little bit of the amazing aftermath of Venom going on here. Uh, we had a couple filler-ish issues in 376 through 377, which I believe, if I recall correctly, because I read these as single issues as a kid, was actually a Hulk guest appearance. Um, and uh, then we have Spider-Man Unlimited 1 and 2. With Spider-Man Unlimited, they decided to add a quarterly uh, large uh, book to the repertoire and it usually has backup features and, and some reprints and things like that along with the main story. I don't know if the epics from this point forward are going to collect all these different side uh, storylines from Spectacular Spider-Man and all that uh, but they do intertwine a lot and uh, the issues do impact each other so especially with Maximum Carnage I guess it mattered. All right. So we get into this, and there's a lot of different artists and writers on here, so the, the Maximum Carnage event itself ends up pretty inconsistent just because of all the people involved. We have Tom DeFalco, yay, my hero. Terry Cavanaugh, David Michelini, and J.M. DeMattis. DeMattis? How do you pronounce that? DeMattis? I'll have to ask him. I talk to him periodically. Um, on Facebook, obviously not in person. Um, we got Ron Lim, a great artist uh, who's uh, done, you know, work on Silver Surfer and other things. Alex Saviuk, uh, who I don't remember. Mark Bagley, uh, who's my favorite out of this bunch. Tom Lyle, Sal Buscema, who's also one of, one of the greats, and Scott McDaniel. So a lot of good stuff right here. Pretty killer creative teams. And uh, here's the cover for Spider-Man Unlimited number one. This is a great cover, honestly. Look, it's Carnage kind of overshadowing Spider-Man like, like he's on the run. It's very good. We got Carnage in the little box here, too. And uh, this was my first exposure to Carnage as a kid. I know he appeared in 361 through 363 uh, the first time. Um, and there were some old uh, issues where uh, Venom escaped, where he got the little symbiote, uh, shows up. And he's in a straight jacket here. After he was taken down, thrown into things, he's singing about murder. And then he just goes on about how he's going to murder people. Look at the crazy eyes uh, that, that Ron Lim draws. And uh, we have fun in here. And we're introduced to a character named Shriek. I believe we're introduced to. Uh, they talk about her as if she was a villain of Cloak and Dagger. Who got sucked into Cloak's uh, cape uh, at some point. And uh, then she saw the darkness and became crazy. 
And uh, so the story begins. Carnage escapes. He teams up with Shriek. Uh, we've got the, Nor the Harry Osborn funeral going on. Shriek then grabs a spider doppelganger who apparently has been running around. And uh, this is J. Jonah Jameson. And we get into uh, Web of Spider-Man for the next one. Right here. And uh, this, like I said, the art gets a little different uh, compared to the last issue, as you can see. Uh, we, we got a lot going back and forth with Liz Osborne. We get Cloak and Dagger showing up in Web of Spider-Man, um, which I, I really liked Dagger when I was like 13, for obvious reasons. Um, and, you know, uh, interesting facial structure, interesting body structure <laughs> uh, that they did with Dagger. It's pretty, uh, pretty cheesecake. But... 13, really like that a lot, obviously. And uh, we have our first fight with Spider-Man and Cloak and Dagger versus the team. And uh, Venom kind of shows up at the end. Now this is where Venom moved off to San Francisco in his own miniseries. And they tried to separate Venom and Spider-Man so Venom can kind of build his own life and do his own thing and they can make him his own anti-hero without Spider-Man getting in the way. Um, and they just roll him back. He, it's like, oh, he knows Carnage is here so he's gonna roll back to New York. I loved this cover also. Um, and Amazing Spider-Man actually has Mark Bagley on it at this time. And you see Mark Bagley's art uh, is just kind of unparalleled here. Uh, you know, everything's a lot more dynamic. Uh, you know, on it, the women are more beautiful in uh, Bagley's art, which I very much enjoy. Everything just is uh, amplified. And you kind of see early uh, representations of how he did Ultimate Spider-Man later. It's a Spider-Man figure. Look at, look at Mary Jane here, just absolutely gorgeous. Mark Badley does uh, great women, uh, very feminine women. Even Shriek in this, who Shriek does not appear attractive in other renditions. Uh, it's only only in Mark Bagley's renditions does Shriek actually appear attractive. It's very interesting, which it, it goes back to the inconsistent art. Like I said, I don't, I don't know what he was intending there versus the others. Others meant her to look a lot more psychotic, um, and you know she almost doesn't even look like a villain here. She looks like, a, like maybe even like Domino or something like that from other Marvel comics. So it goes along, and we just get a lot of fights, and uh, the teams build up over the first few issues. We get Demo Goblin showing up, and Demo Goblin joins the team, and then Carnage uh, calls it his family, and it shrieks his, his, his lady, and these are his children. It's, it's kind of weird. It shows the, uh, the, the sort of craziness of what's going on, I guess, which is what it's supposed to. Um, and uh, Peter actually starts helping Venom. Uh, we get Black Cat uh, introduced uh, in this next issue here. And the teams grow, and, uh, and it, it becomes a moral story, really, of will Spider-Man succumb to, like, Venom's tactics uh, of killing and being brutal in order to stop Venom? And, of course, there's, uh, there's all these uh, background characters who chime in on that. Peter's uh, father is here, and, and he's uh, returned from Russia uh, with his mother after being missing for all of these years. Aunt May uh, is housing them, and Peter's father's all for the brutality, saying, you gotta stop those killers. Uh, and Mary Jane's just like, please stop being Spider-Man. I can't handle this. Um, Carry On shows up. He's another character. Uh, he's from the Clone Saga, really. And uh, and then the teams just get bigger. And then uh, this is where Spider-Man really has his breakdown. You'll get no mercy from Spider-Man. Ah! <laughs> and because uh, he's realizing uh, basically what happens is Spider-Man goes out into the streets um, after after trying to shut down Venom and his things. And all these people are just looting and rioting, you know, much like people do in crises a lot. And Spider-Man is just like, you know what, screw it. I'm sick of, uh, sick of uh, playing easy on these people. We get back into Web of Spider-Man again. Now we're going through the full rotation. This is part six. I think uh, the last one must have been spectacular for part five. Um, and uh, we're just going through the rotation of four books with the different artists. Uh, you see, again, like this tone here is a lot creepier and more horror-like than the other tones uh, of the artists from this uh, in, in Web of Spider-Man here. We got Morbus showing up here to join the good guys team. Morbus is also more of a brutal type. So we have this like brutal types, uh, brutal types of heroes fighting. Mary Jane almost gets kidnapped by Carnage, and Spider Man goes back out there despite broken ribs. Um, and we are into the seventh part of things, and now we get Deathlock showing up. Is this just becomes like a 
B and C list Marvel superheroes uh, <laughs> fest as they as the, all these people team up. Deathlock, uh, they go over a little bit of who Deathlock is as it slows down here. We get some more fighting. Of course, lots of fighting, lots of angry and eating your brains and things like that. And uh, then Cloak shows up with Firestar. Like I said, it's another B and C list uh, sort of deal. Uh, in this, it appears like Dagger dies. And so Firestar is helping Cloak uh, in Dagger's uh, sort of stead here and uh and joins the team yay so yeah no more mr nice venom like venom was ever nice pretty funny so uh you see what's kind of going to happen here and we are in the regular spider-man title for this next part and again tom lyle's art just is wildly different than the others uh we get a guest appearance of the molten man and more guest appearances more guest appearances more fights more fights the teams go up against one another Carnage has built his family. Uh, Carnage is almost going to die here because he gets shot with Firestar's deal, but Firestar pulls back. She can't she can't kill him because she's a good guy. And then he goes, you know what? Carnage never dies. Um, and so it, it seems kind of ugly. And it goes back and forth with, like, the good guys, you know, being brutal and then Venom pushing towards brutality and then people like Spider-Man and Firestar going, no, we cannot do that. We are moral. We must morally lose. Um, and then them kind of losing. And um, even though the moral of the story is just to not lose your soul in all of this, which is not a bad moral, it just doesn't flow very well as a story. And, and you don't really, you know, I mean, honestly, the consequences for them uh, not doing as Venom says and just killing Cletus Cassidy here and just offing him is that dozens and dozens of more people die. And they could have just stopped it, but they just refused to do it. Um, it's not like they could bring him in for justice. I mean, look at carnage as a character and what he's doing so it doesn't it doesn't quite make sense um you know uh trying to tell this like shades of gray uh where do we go morally as heroes sort of thing at this point and uh what are we in spectacular spider-man uh yeah we are um i don't know i love sal Buscema's art most of the time but i actually did not enjoy it so much in maximum carnage here uh it doesn't if you look at the faces um you know, she's very masculine here. Uh, there's just some issues uh, with the way things are drawn. We're in, the, in the, I, I don't know who the inker is, but the inks are very heavy. Who did the inks on this? I guess Sal did his own inks. He was primarily an inker anyway. Um, so it's, it, things just kind of, you know, Black Hat looks kind of masculine there. That's kind of a weird figure and pose there. Didn't quite work out in this issue as we have our next Carnage team fight. Um, and then Shriek almost kills Venom. Uh, Spider-Man really is struggling here, and uh, we get this uh, very famous double-page spread uh, where Captain America is, uh, you know, looks very classic and heroly. He's like, oh, I will help you, Spider-Man. And uh, it just continues. It's just a little too long. I was pretty, I, I, when I read this, I was pretty excited in the first few issues, and then uh, as we just go back, we've got a Nightwatch, uh, who's a, a character who had his own series at this time, um, just a few issues. Again, this is a, another weird looking face on Black Cat here. I don't know if they're rushing. Who was on, who was on this issue here? Who was on this one? Too many issues. Uh, Alex Saviuk? I don't know that name. Oh, well. Um, yeah, again, I don't like the, the Alex Saviuk art all that much. Look at this page. It's just like, I don't know if this was a bad scan or something like that, but it, it just like, colors look a little washed out. It just doesn't doesn't work very well. Um, I don't know if they were just trying to rush for deadlines on this and just like really expanded this story too much, but it was great in the beginning. I really enjoyed it in the beginning. All these superheroes then show up. It just becomes kind of a convoluted mess at this point and you forget who's who and who's where and um, it's, a, it's just a little less fun. It gets better back in uh, Amazing Spider-Man here because Venom's captured, really focuses in on the Venom and Carnage conflict. Uh, we learn that Shriek is actually the one causing everybody to uh, go crazy and again we're, we're back i think it also mark bagley's art really helps uh on these on these issues because again like shriek looks a lot more feminine here i don't know why her boobs are showing so much but whatever mary jane's got a very nice face he does he just does a little little better job than the rest of the artists um and uh this this whole venom uh deal with him over the fire uh you know it really it really struck pretty well emotionally 
um, as you see his actual torture and torment before Carnage finally screws up and he escapes as it comes in here. So they stop Shriek from her deal. We get a, a newscast uh, recap here. Oh, oh, Venom hasn't escaped yet. I'm sorry. I'm in the next, uh, next uh, chapter here. Um, and we're into chapter 12. So this is a very long storyline, as you can tell. And it's just fight after fight. And they go back and forth. And the heroes don't have the will to actually stop Carnage. Um, and then Dagger re-shows up uh, back up. Which I liked. I, I liked that she was able to, like, you know, re-coalesce in energy, come back, not actually die, uh, be part of the, uh, the the victor here. Very weird uh, coloring with the red on Cloak's face. Don't quite understand that, but what can you do? Um, and this is one of my favorite co covers of the series. Also, just the close-up on the, the evil carnage. Um, worked very well for Spectacular. Very creepy. Um, and we have Dagger back again. Um, and like I said, I just don't feel... Bushema's art uh, in this series in particular. Uh, Dagger looks kind of kind of wonky there, which doesn't work well, especially with her like very cheesecake costume. Um, and we're back into uh, back into the fight once more. Um, and just the superheroes are getting together. I don't have much to say about it at this point. Looks like Carnage dies at one point. Carnage doesn't actually die. He's really alive and well. Everybody thinks he's dead. Everybody's ready to go home. Uh, Shriek's been, uh, she kind of gets redeemed. It, says, it even says redemption. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, she, uh, she just kind of realizes what she was doing wrong, but that doesn't last very long in Amazing Spider-Man, as we'll find out in a few issues. Um, and then we get into the last chapter. So really it ended pretty well here, except for this whole Carnage coming back. It, it should have probably ended here, but they, they wanted to go another issue. I'm fine, because when Tom DeFalco writes, I kind of enjoy the dialogue a little better. And then we get this weird symbiote thing where we know the symbiotes like are only uh, get damaged by like fire and sound waves and microwaves and things like that. Yeah, we have Venom directly ripping off Carnage's suit, which I don't understand. And it doesn't, it doesn't do anything, but it hurt for some reason. I don't understand. Uh, you know, that's, that's something you don't really see very often when, when you're uh, dealing with symbiotes, and I think it kind of doesn't make sense with everything else uh, that goes on with their background, unfortunately. We have some of the, the side B heroes talking uh, who really don't matter and don't interact against. So there's not much. Peter goes back and visits Mary Jane. Uh, we get a Carnage origin again. We're going back and learning about heroes, and Peter talks about, I'm going to be heroes the right way and not... Not the wrong way here. Yeah, yeah, see? I'm going to do it my way. Tom DeFalco is a little heavy-handed in that, but um, but it's fine. Uh, it fits with Peter Parker, and it, as, as lame... Even even when I was a kid, I thought it was kind of lame that Peter Parker would just, like, leave Carnage and just be like, no, don't kill him. Let him go ravage other people and kill them. Um, we had this Carnage rules sign that's stuck there for a while, and we, we show it being destroyed. We visit Carnage's past here and just see how uh, he was as a child and demented as a child. Pure dementia and pure pure evil, which we show. Uh, just a little Black Cat recap so we know what happened with her. Tom DeFalco really just tries to touch on all those like B heroes so we kind of know where they're at. As this goes right back to Venom uh, and Spider-Man uh, versus Carnage, so we really did not need all of those heroes this entire time. Uh, it just... You know, it just escalated into these teams, and then uh, it, it drills right back to basics for this entire issue for a very long fight here. Spider-Man's about to die, but Black Cat actually is the only one who comes back into this out of that whole group. Um, and she has a little uh, arc where she's not sure she wants to do this because she's doesn't you know she doesn't quite have the powers. She's getting beat up. Doesn't want to. Doesn't want to. Isn't isn't sure of herself, but she goes and does the right thing anyway. So. Uh, Venom then jumps into, uh, like, a power transformer, uh, disappears, presumably dead, but he's obviously not, um, and uh, Cassidy, or Carnage, is uh, knocked out, not killed, uh, but doesn't have the symbiote. So they're just going to leave him and just hope the symbiote never grows back, because that makes a lot of sense. I don't understand why they would do that, but okay. Um, and uh, we get a, since that doesn't quite make sense, we get a little panel of Vision saying, hey, uh, we're gonna put him in a real containment this time uh, with a little nod to Thunderstrike, which uh, DeFalco was uh, writing at the time uh, in Thor. 
Um, and that's it. And we get Spider-Man, uh, believe it or not, some monsters stay dead and are buried forever and their ghosts can't haunt you unless you allow them. And we see these and of course they don't stay dead. Uh, but it is what it is. Overall, that storyline was way too long. Like I said, I was like done with it by probably chapter six. And then in those middle arcs, I just like, I really wanted it to end. And they kept introducing more and more like C tier heroes like Deathlock and Nightwatch who really did not have any impact on the story. And it was pretty pointless to have them there. Um, the bad guys team at least stops growing around issue six. I think whenever Carry On gets introduced, and they they even disappear, and I'll get I'll get uh, wiped out in chapter thirteen, which makes the climax of uh, the last issue here a lot uh, less exciting than it would have been, since we already had a much more epic battle with all the the superhero teams, and now we're drawing back to this smaller battle. So it really petered out it, rather than went out with a bang. Unfortunately, it was pretty fun from the start, but uh, the inconsistent art, uh, the the building of the teams and then you know spider-man going back and forth with this whole like should i kill him uh i i'm gonna have no mercy now and then then totally doing the opposite next issue then totally going back next issue then doing the opposite next issue uh the ping pong effect there was just like you know i i i think they were trying to send a, a message of some sort but it didn't get communicated very well so that's that now this uh saber uh punisher spider-man designer jeans uh basically it's just got the three characters uh doing their thing and they sort of are coming across the same problem punisher is finding out that there's these people like who looks like it's saber tooth and they think it's saber tooth for most of the issue uh going around killing stuff uh, in a brutal way with claws and stuff spider-man sees this happening uh in his empire state university lab so he decides to investigate and uh, it's, it's pretty long, again, for what it is. Uh, I don't love the art in this. Uh, I think it's not super detailed and doesn't come across uh, very, very well in a lot of spots. Maybe it's the snow throughout the whole thing, looking like little blots, uh, just being a little obnoxious on that level. Um, and the faces don't, don't do it for me. It, the snow really distracts a lot in a lot of cases, so you don't really have a good focal point. It makes it distracting. Um, and they, they investigate this whole crime situation um, as a one-off thing. And Spider-Man does his whole, like, I don't approve of your ways. I'm going to bring you in, Punisher, as soon as this is done. Uh, much like he did with Venom in, in Maximum Carnage. So you just kind of get the repeat. And reading it right after that, uh, you know, was a little tough. Uh, especially as they then have to work together just like Carnage and him have to work together. They keep trying to track Sabretooth. But it leads them to this Rock Sun Corporation where it turns out there's these illegal experiments on genetics, where they've turned a guy into a man-wolf thingy, man-bear-pig. Uh, and, and he does have bear in him, too, so it's wolf and bear. It's not man-bear-pig, uh, but it's as close to man-bear-pig as you're going to get in reality. And uh, they fight that thing, and it, it very bizarre ending here. So uh, they, they Punisher really lights up the Roxxon Corporation there. Spider-Man does the whole, no, we're not going to kill him. We're going to tie him up. Uh, and then Sabretooth just busts out of this door, and it turns out he killed the guy who orchestrated for it, but it wasn't done on screen. Like, that was the weird part. Like, you, comics always tells you show, don't tell, right? This is this is the show, don't tell. And they tell us that Sabretooth brutalized him, but, and with Sabretooth's name on the cover, you would, you would have expected they would have, like, shown that. I mean, it would have been interesting to see. I don't know why they did it this way. But it was, I had to go back a couple times, because I'm like, did I miss Sabretooth doing this? No, I didn't. It just was not done on screen. So they did not tell, they told us that this guy was brutally murdered uh, by Sabretooth uh, and then it didn't happen. Sabretooth escapes, Spider-Man starts fighting Punisher again and then uh, Punisher's like, oh, it's gonna blow. And uh, they all get out of there and uh, they get chased. And we learn that this guy uh, has uh, the wolf as his brother and uh, is going to try to you know, do something with him and I guess set him up possibly as a, a villain happening again. Um, so I don't know. It wasn't very exciting. Uh, I didn't, I didn't really have a ton of fun with this. Uh, after Maximum Carnage, it, you know, seemed to hit on similar notes to Maximum Carnage, uh, thematically, but it was, um, it was just a little boringer. So that's that. Now you get some cool, uh, extras in this. You get a guide to Maximum Carnage. You got to remember 
these crossovers weren't done at the time. So despite you got to start here, then you go to this issue, then this issue, and it gives a little summary of each one for you. Pretty neat right there. Uh, we get a hot sheet talk about Carnage on uh, Spider-Man Unlimited here. And uh, we learn about Tom DeFalco's uh, involvement in this and, and how the edit editorial really wanted Tom DeFalco on a Spider-Man story. I did too, so that's great. Um, we get uh, some more interview. We get some interviews here about the crossover and a little write-up of this big crossover. Very cool. Uh, we get some posters. This is uh, from the trade paperbacks. I had this trade paperback before uh, and annoyingly had to buy it again because of this uh, epic collection. Um, and we get some, uh, I guess, oh, this is what I learned here. Uh, the uh, Spider-Man 102, when it was collected in the uh, trade paperback, uh, the uh, pages two for four through four were shrunk to two pages and the dialogue was altered. So this is what it was in the trade paperback. I don't know why they took out two pages of the book. It's very interesting history to note though. And then uh, uh, J.M. DeMattis uh, had a uh, thing about uh, Maximum Carnage, which is from that old trade paperback. So I'd read this before. It was neat to have this in here. And he's like, and it starts out with, to tell you the truth, I didn't want to do it. Uh, and he, he probably had the right call on that initially. I don't know. Um, I have read this um, in the last couple of years. It didn't hold up so well from when I thought, when I was a kid, I absolutely loved it. I loved the violence. I thought this was crazy. Um, but, uh, it didn't hold up afterwards. And, uh, I liked it a little better this time. Like I said, I, I enjoyed the opening of it a little more, uh, and then the closing kind of whimpered out, I think. Um, and then the little saber tooth graphic novel, uh, add on was, uh, was kind of unnecessary as a read, uh, and definitely is just a one shot that doesn't really impact anything in the spider verse. So, uh, it was all right there. Uh, overall, I liked Mark Bagley's art. Um, I, the others, not as much. Um, I guess Tom Lyle was all right. And then, the, uh, then you know, kind of, kind of slid down the scale from there. Maybe they were rushed. I don't know. Overall, uh, because I was entertained a little bit, I guess I got to give it like a 6 out of 10. But uh, yeah, it's, it's on the low side of 6 out of 10. Uh, not one of the best storylines. And I really wish they gave me volume 16 instead of this 25 so I could have that whole run. Dang it. Or even 24, uh, because uh, then I then I could get all the, the lead up to this, and I'd like to read that uh, ending of Venom uh, versus Spider-Man, the final confrontation in 375 again. But they didn't release it that way, so I'm going to have to wait for those books a couple more years. And that's it. That's my review of Maximum Carnage. If you like the content, please hit the like and subscribe button, and I will be back next time.